everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa, if you're new around here. And today's video is gonna be an update on my British short hairs, Gigi and Milan. I don't think I've done a video in about four or five months now, giving you an update on them both. So it would be a lovely time to do that. Milan has just turned one and Gigi is one and a half. So we've been British short hair owners now for over a year now. And that time has gone so, so fast. I feel like we've learned a lot about cats and specifically the British short hair breed since we've had them and I have no regrets on getting them. So yeah, if you would like to know a little bit more about our cats, Gigi and Milan, and a little bit more about the British short hair breed, then just keep watching. I've got loads of other British short hair videos. So if you're getting a British short hair soon or thinking about getting one, I'll leave a playlist down below for you. So you can go check them out. I've done kitten hauls, I've done updates on them all and lots of other different types of videos. So make sure you check those out. But I'm gonna get into the video today by answering a few of your questions, so let's get into it. So one of the questions I got the other day was, I'm wondering if they prefer a lot of activity, exercise, play, etc., or if they are more laid back, such beautiful cats. Thank you, they are so beautiful. I would say that when we first got them, when they were young kittens, they were very, very playful throughout the day. They still had their sleep time and nap times, but they were very, very playful. But now that they're getting a little bit older, they're still not adults yet, but now they're getting a little bit older, they tend to sleep a lot. Gigi will be awake with me more throughout the day. She's behind me having a clean, but Gigi tends to stay awake a little bit more than Milan. So Milan will take himself off and he will go and sleep for most of the day. He gets up, comes and have a little mooch around, but most of the day he's quite inactive, I would say, especially if it's warm weather. Gigi will have her naps throughout the day She's not really so playful as much, I would say, but she loves to have a sleep. So yeah, they do have their play times. They tend to wake up a lot more during the evening times and first thing in the morning. But um, yeah, in the daytime, they're not, not very active at all. Okay, the next one. I also have a lilac and a blue, very different personalities and a year apart. They are both boys. Whilst they don't fight, just play fight really, I do sense an element of competition. Toulouse is clearly more dominant. Winston is very polite. Because they are so different, I wondered whether yours are in comparison with each other at all. Nothing huge, but as an example, Winston used to sleep on my bed next to me. When Toulouse came along, he decided to go and sleep on the floor behind the chair. When Toulouse is not in the room, Winston will come and sleep next to me. Do you sense any competition to mark you as their property between your two beautiful babies? Now, I did notice a big difference in Gigi, our older cat, when we got Milan. Although I did think Gigi would become a little bit like a, of a mother figure or like a big sister figure when Milan came along. And I feel like that has happened. She gives in to him a lot more. Although I find that he is very chilled and very laid back, I do find him to be slightly more dominating over Gigi, if that makes sense, even though you wouldn't think it to look at him. I do find that she does sit back or she'll move if he tends to go near her or in her space. So sometimes she'll be in her bed in our bedroom because we've got a little cat bed in there that Gigi tends to like to sleep in. And if he goes over and bothers her, she will get up and she will move to a new spot, which is by our bathroom door where she can kind of see everything that's going on and she'll stay there which I guess is like her safe space. So yeah, she does, Milan I would say our boy cat is more dominating and he will kind of start the play fighting if that makes sense. Um, Gigi does have her moments where she'll start the play fighting with him as well, but I do find that he does it a lot more than her. Um, but they do play fight, not as much as they did when we first got them. When, they, when we first got them, they were still figuring each other out. Whereas now I think they know each other's boundaries. They tend to have a little scuffle around the house a few times a day. And I often will find Gigi's fur um, in little clumps around the house because her fur is a little bit longer than Milan's. And I guess he gets his claws in and gets her fur off of her. So yeah, I know when they've had little fights around the house because I do see the hair, which is always great. And I've got this as well, which I thought I would show you quickly. This is called ace to ace and this is brilliant for getting pet hair off of sofas or any kind of fabrics floors carpets it's absolutely fabulous so literally all you do is kind of do this all the way around do it wherever they're sitting particularly because they get all their fur everywhere and then it all just collects inside which is just fab so i'll link that one down below for you because it's really good for getting pet hair off of fabrics and any other kind of areas, so blankets and things like that, isn't it? What 
can you see? What is it? What is it? Oh, are you saying hello? <laughs> you are so funny. You're so inquisitive. Milan is so much more inquisitive than Gigi. He's always interested in what I'm doing. If I'm ever doing anything, he's very nosy. Whereas Gigi is much more careful. Aren't you, Gigi? You're much more careful. In answer to your question, they do have very different personalities. The next question is, do you feed them a combination diet? So I've gone over um, different foods that they eat in previous videos, so I'll link those down below for you, but they do have a combination of wet food and dry food. So I tend to leave dry food out all day, which is the Royal Cannon dry biscuits for British short pears. And then they'll have um, wet pouches in the morning and in the evening they tend to have half a pouch each to be honest because i found that if i do a whole pouch each they will just leave it half a pouch each in the morning and then they'll have half a pouch each in the evening and that seems to be doing them really well and then they have um, a few treats throughout the day as well the next question is what's your grooming routine i actually don't groom them as much as i did when i first got them to be honest because i don't feel like they need it although at the moment it is shedding season so they are shedding a lot more so I am brushing them a lot more at the moment but Milan has got really really short fur he doesn't tend to shed very much at all Gigi is a lot fluffier and she does shed a little bit more okay so Gigi is in her current spot so this is her her sleep, sleeping spot isn't it Gigi hey she's purring now she's so sweet and as you can see she's got such beautiful plush fur that is currently molting if you can see that there is some fur there so what we're going to do is we're going to give her a little brush now would you like a brush Gigi yes and ever since she was a baby I've always given her treats when I brush her just to kind of make it a really positive experience for her so she enjoys it and actually at the start she used to try and get away from me whereas now she knows the score and she enjoys it she actually purrs and she has her brushing done this is the type of brush that i will use to brush her and she's already spotted the treats haven't you so that is your brush there duty girl and then today's treats are going to be these um thrive pure and irresistible chicken treats so 100 percent chicken treats which again she enjoys these are you getting ready to have a snack are you so whenever i want her over this side and i'll put a treat there and then I'll just simply brush her. I don't give her treats throughout the whole time because otherwise she'll have so many treats. I just kind of give them to her throughout. She does quite like it under her chin area. And once I get under the chin, she quite likes it under there. Don't you? Just give her a little stroke while she's having it. And I just give her a nice little rub just so she's enjoying it at the same time. And then when I want her to come round to the other side, I will show her the treat and then bring her round. Oh, you're a beautiful girl, aren't you? Is that nice? Is that nice? You're getting very big now, Gigi. Good girl. So that is how I brush Gigi. And this is what the brush looks like after that grooming session. So that is the fur that I got off of her in that little brushing session. Another popular question was, will you be adding a third to your family? And the answer is maybe, maybe one day we will because I am cat obsessed. I love them. They bring me so much happiness and I just feel like they're amazing for your mental health. Cats have brought me so much joy and the whole family absolutely love them. So yeah, potentially we will. I know that yours are house cats and do have an outside catio, but do they try and get outside when you open your outside house doors? I've just adopted a cat that was a stray and I want him to be a house cat but it's a worry when the outside doors are being open. I am considering an outside catio because I feel guilty he had a life outside before. Okay so it's a little bit different I suppose because he had a life outside before so I don't really know how he will feel or how he does feel about obviously being inside now and the change for him. Our cats do have a catio and they don't ever try and get out the doors to be honest when we've got the doors open especially Gigi she'll just sit there and kind of watch us go in and out but she never tries to go outside she knows what it's like out there we've got leads for them we do put them on that in the garden and that is their garden time and in the catio which they love we do have our windows open 
because we have shutters which have been amazing so last summer we didn't have shutters on our house and we couldn't open the windows we did buy some meshing that you could put over your windows and there are um, places where you can buy that which worked out really well as well because we had a few windows upstairs which i really needed to open because it was just so hot so i put the meshing on the window and that stopped the cats obviously jumping out of it because it had mesh all over it the ones i bought were just like cheap ones on amazon but they definitely worked but now we do have shutters so we can keep the windows open and they can't get out because the shutters keeps them in which is brilliant i need to get shutters on the other side of the house because currently they're only on one side eventually we'll have them everywhere and that will enable us to open the windows and get that fresh air also if you do have quite an enclosed garden and you've got fences there is a product out there called i think it's called protector pet and this goes onto your fence so it attaches to your fence and it kind of like goes up and arches inwards it kind of is at an angle i'll show you a picture of it it looks like that basically and because because of the angle cats don't like to climb and like climb backwards if that makes sense so they'll never attempt to jump over it because they won't be able to so if you have got a fenced garden that would be a brilliant option for you and then you, your cat can still go out in the garden have free time and you're not worried about him escaping such a worry for people that have house cats i know um, I'm always worried about it if the kids leave the door open, although they're very, very good and they don't tend to do that anymore. But when we first got them, they would forget, but now they're absolutely brilliant. So I don't ever have a worry about it. And the cats never, never really hang around the doors, to be honest. Sorry, I just had to change my camera battery then because it ran out again. Why did you choose this breed of cat? Considering getting another cat as my two cats passed away a few years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. And it's taken us until now to decide to get another thinking British short hair. So with ours, we just come across the breed actually by chance because my mum's friend breeds British short hairs. So we found the cats through her and I looked into the breed. We actually looked into the breed many years before that. And I don't know why or how I came across them actually. They are just the most amazing breed. They're so relaxed, they're so sweet and they are their own cats if you know what i mean they don't need constant full attention they're very happy to just relax on their own they do love playtime as well they're a really beautiful breed and they're amazing with children which was very important for me because i've got three boys and the boys obviously love cats they love cuddles and they can be boisterous at times and the cats have been amazing with them so they are really a friendly breed and i think they're great with the families and they're also great with other pets as well. So my mum has got dogs and ever since we've had the cats or kittens and they've brought the dogs around, they've got used to them very, very quickly and they're very tolerant of them, which is great. And like I said, the cats are very tolerant of our children. So that's also great. So yeah, they're a lovely breed. I love having house cats. I love that I, they're always with me. They're great company and they're just an amazing breed. They're really, really lovely. So yeah. I would definitely recommend British short hairs. I did also look into ragdolls as well when I was looking for my second cat, Milan. And that ragdolls are also a really beautiful breed. They do need a little bit more maintenance, shall we say, because they're a lot longer fur. But yeah, both really lovely breeds and I think both really good for families as well. Another question is how are they having their nails cut? So Mark and I kind of tag team when it comes to doing their nails. So I tend to hold one of the cats and Mark will clip their nails with the little nail clippers. We just have a pet nail clippers and they're both really good. They actually don't mind it at all. So whenever we do them, I will always hold one of them very securely and Mark will clip their nails. Like you just push on their pads and their kind of nails will come out and you can just clip them very, very quickly. And then after that, I'll always give them a little treat just to let them know that, you know, they did really well and it's still a positive experience for them. We've never had any problems in cutting their nails, but we've always done it from when they were babies and right from the beginning. And I think that's really important. It's always important to keep these things regular from when they're young. And that is with grooming as well. I would say definitely to groom them from when they're babies just to get them used to it and to keep it a positive experience for them. How do you keep them cool in the summer on a humid day? So with them being indoor cats, of course it does get warm in our house. And like I said, we do have our shutters now, so we're able to keep the windows open and allow that airflow into the house, which does cool them down. We also have wooden floors downstairs and we have tiles around the house as well so they tend to stay in those areas where it's coolest and also milan actually loves it under my son's bed because i think that's quite a cool spot as well so yeah they tend to kind of 
take themselves off to the coolest area of the house. I also try and give them treats that are going to cool them down. I always change their water and I'll put little ice cubes in the water to keep it cool and I make them milk lollies which are really lovely. It's a warm day today so I'm just making the cats like a little ice lolly so I've popped some of these little treats in there, dental life ones which are good for their teeth and then I'm going to put a little bit of whiskers kitten milk in there and then I'm going to pop it in the freezer for later. It's just a nice refreshing snack for them. I did these for Gigi last year and she loved it. So those are what they look like. So I've just got them in the freezer now and I'm going to give them to them later on. Gigi and Milan probably won't have the whole lolly each. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break it in half, pop it in a bowl for them and they can enjoy that whilst it's quite warm today. There are other things that you can do. They have cool mats that you can buy and then some nice ice lolly treats, which are always lovely for them as well. So yeah, that is what I tend to do. Um, to keep them cool in the warmer weather and also in the summer I'm sure I'll rediscover some old tips that I used last year so I will share them with you as and when we come across them okay I'll answer a couple more questions now so um how many times no how many times a month do you bathe them so give them a bath we don't actually bath them they're very very clean this is something that I definitely noticed when we first got them I had a preconception that cats were going to smell and it's quite the opposite they're extremely clean cats especially british short hairs i've had no problems with them smelling in any way they smell lovely and they're very very clean you don't have to bath them Gigi, well cats in general don't really like water Gigi is very wary of water so like you know if i'm running a bath or anything she'll stay away from it whereas milan is very interested in water and always likes to be around it so He's quite funny, he's fallen in the bath um, maybe once or twice. I think he's fallen in the bath twice. When I've been running a bath for the kids, so the water has not been hot, but he's jumped in there a couple of times because he's so inquisitive, but he jumps right out and um, tends to lick himself dry. And that is the only kind of experience really that they've had in water. So yeah, we've never bathed them. We've never really had to. I'm not sure it'd be a positive experience for Gigi. I don't think she'd like it at all, um, but so far, uh, they're very clean cats and we've had no problems at all. So basically this question is, what are their characters like and do they love to be, you know, fussed over basically? And what I will say is, so Gigi, when we first got her, I thought she was such a, a sassy girl. She was very sassy at the start, I find. I found that she was a little bit more sassy at, at the start. She's not sassy at all, actually. She's just very, very loving, very, very sweet girl. Gigi's always been a really sweet girl, but she always let you know when when she'd had enough either of being picked up or stroked she would let you know but now i feel like maybe because we've got the two it kind of balances out like how much attention she gets and i think she prefers the amount of attention she gets now to maybe before maybe she got a little bit too much before and it used to bother her maybe but she is so sweet she'll follow me around the house all day long and um, if she hears us come home, she's waiting for us by the door and she gives us lots of love in ways like, for example, she'll brush herself up against us with her head. She'll brush her whole body against you and purr with you and she's just so sweet. She really has a look on her that you know that she loves you so much. So yeah, Gigi is so lovely, but she doesn't love cuddles. She's not a cuddly girl at all. And I guess that is quite common for British short hairs. They don't really tend to love to be cuddled or be on your lap very long. They're not really lap cats. I know some may be, but ours are not. <laughs> they do give us love in loads of different ways. Whereas Milan, he again is very relaxed. He's a little gentleman, I would say. And he actually doesn't mind a cuddle and he'll let us cuddle him. So with Gigi, she if you pick her up she'll be waiting to get down you just know she's like struggling to get back down she wants to get back down to the floor which is fair enough but with milan if you pick him up he'll just he'll just wait and he's just very patient and he'll let you give him a cuddle which is just so lovely it's really lovely to give him a cuddle he's very very sweet in that way and milan has never got his claws out to any of us ever which I think is quite rare. He probably has with Mark when Mark play fights with him. Gigi also will if you play fight with her or if you annoy her, she'll probably go like that a little bit. Whereas Milan, he never seems to get annoyed or bothered by anything. He's very, very laid back and he's very, very tolerant as well. I would say out of the two, Gigi being a female and Milan being a boy, a male, I would say that the male is much more 
tolerant and relaxed and will let you cuddle him more than what Gigi would so you can kind of cuddle him a little bit but they'll never they will never come and sit on your lap they're just not like that they're just not that type of cat which I at the start was a little bit like oh I would just love to or anything just to have a cuddle with them for five minutes or for them to just come and sit with me for five minutes but they just don't and we're so used to that now we just we are just used to their own ways and their own pers personalities which I absolutely love as well so yeah they're not cuddly cats but they do give you lots and lots of love in so many different ways and it kind of just makes up for that so yeah they're an amazing amazing breed but so this right here is milan's favorite toy and he's currently sleeping in Vinny's bedroom i expect when he hears this noise the bell he'll be down but Gigi's here now she wants to play the thing is as soon as she sees milan she'll stop playing and this is something i've definitely noticed with her and him is that she tends to watch out for him and she lets him play don't you hey Look, she's looking for him already. Do you find your cats do that? Because I find that she'll stop playing if Milan's around. So I always tend to like to, ha I do their playtime separate really because if he's around, she won't really play and I feel bad for her. I want her to have that playtime as well. Oh, is that fun? Give it then. Give it then. I can hear your brother. Here he is. Here he is, <laughs> Milan. Did you hear the toy? Is this your favourite? Is this your favourite toy? You want to say hello to your sister? Milan is nearly, well, he is heavier than Gigi, I would say now. He is about six months younger than her. And as you can see, he is a blue. And Gigi is a lilac, so she's slightly lighter in colour. He looks like such a gentleman, doesn't he? What's this? What can you see? Loves to be straight right at the bottom of his back. Um, like he loves the scratch there, whereas Gigi absolutely hates it. But Milan loves it. So they're very different in where they like to be touched as well. So I think it is very individual when it comes to the cats. He loves it here. And often he'll just lie down because he loves it so much. So look, see, literally lies down and then he likes it under his chin as well. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> he just wants to kind of brush up against these toys quite often. And now he wants another stroke on his back, you see. Can you see now how Gigi's gone over there? And she's like, I'm not playing. <laughs> so that is something I've definitely noticed. So any other differences, let me think. So Milan has got slightly darker eyes than Gigi, but British short hairs tend to have this really gorgeous orange coloured eye. You can see his are slightly darker than Gigi's. Milan is playful, but I would say at his age, I think that Gigi was probably a little bit more playful. I find that he is a little bit more lazy. Um, but you are loving this, are you? Are you loving all the attention? Are you loving the attention? He purrs a lot as well. Gigi's happy to watch from the sidelines, I think, a lot of the time, and lets her little brother play. And they are actually half brother and sister, these two. They've both got the same dad. Do you want to play? Would you like to play, Gigi? Come on then. She's always watching here, her brother. So yes, more dominant one down here. I think I'm going to leave the video there because I feel like I've been talking forever and you're probably bored of me now. But do you have any other questions or anything else you'd like to know about British short hairs or our cats Gigi and Milan, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. I know so many of you have found me through searching for British short hair cat videos. So welcome if you are new around here. If you have recently got a British short hair, then let me know how you're getting on. If you are a cat owner or a British short hair owner, then let me know their names and what they're like in the comments down below. And thank you so, so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.